Hello, thanks for tuning into this episode. Before we start, Fintech Focus TV is brought to you by Harrington Star, global leaders in financial technology recruitment. Head to the Harrington Star website and check the links below so you can download the latest copy of the Financial Technologist magazine. And also, we've got the TradFi and DeFi Era of Convergence documentary coming up. If you're interested in the merger of the two, please get in touch. Thanks a lot and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Fintech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb. Today we are going out to Ireland to talk to a really, really exciting company and I'm delighted to introduce you to Stella Clark from Finogo. Stella, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Listen, thanks so much for coming onto the show. Um, there's some exciting stuff to talk, talk you through. I think there's, a, there's um, some real meat that we're going to get into in the, in the process of this conversation. But before we do, do all of that, tell us, if you would, a little bit about yourself, what you do and uh, the background of Finogo as well. Thanks, Toby. So I'm Stella Clark. I'm Chief Strategy and Marketing Officer at Finergo. And I have uh, over 20 years experience uh, working with financial institutions across the globe, um, helping them to solve technology and operation issues. It's an interesting background as well. I've seen some of the companies you worked for in the past, and there's a, uh, a few excuse upon a stellar, a stellar track record in the industry that, you, that we've seen so far. So uh, and you've landed, landed at Finergo. Tell, tell us about Finergo. What, so you've been there about uh, 18 months or so now, I understand. Uh, and it's a, you know, it's a super impressive company. Tell us what attracted you to the business and, uh, and a little bit about what Finergo, you know, what problems Finergo solve in the marketplace at the moment. Finergo is a global leader in client lifecycle management. And basically, Finergo helps financial institutions and regulated entity to onboard safely their customer and to monitor them throughout their uh, relationship uh, with the institution. And we do that safely and compliantly, which is super important in today's uh, world. So what attracted me to, to Finergo is the fact that it's, it's a company which is really at a very interesting point in its, its story. Um, it started over 10 years ago just after the crisis in 2008, when Mark Murphy, our CEO and founder, started the company and uh, saw an opportunity to help digitizing some of the processes around KYC, which at the time were super cumbersome and basically with all the challenges that the, that the industry was facing, becoming more and more complex, especially for financial institutions that were operating across the globe, across geographies. Um, and that was really the starting point. Um, what fascinates me about Finergo is that it has acquired a unicorn status. So it's uh, one of the few unicorns that we have here in Ireland. And that it's really ready now to, to scale up to the next level, uh, following um, an important investment in really uh, redeveloping uh, the technology into a, a SaaS multi-tenant that makes it um, easily available, far more easy to deploy than it was in the past. And this is where we are today, and I'm super excited to be uh, you know, part of this um, adventure and to see what it can bring us in the next uh, few years. The, pre the press around the company is being fantastic. And as you say, look, there is a uh, you know, there hasn't been a, a, a sort of avalanche of uh, Irish unicorns that have, come, <laughs> that have come, come out there. Tell us some of the reasons why you think uh, Fenergo has managed to a, a, a attain that. What's behind, you know, what the, what's the secret source behind that, that achievement? As the first one is a team. I think there is an exceptional team at Fenergo and a, a, re a really good mix of uh, experts, experts in uh, banking processes, in compliance and in technology, because we are you know, a technology company. And I think that's really, that's the secret sauce when you're able to mix them properly to really deliver the best technology, but with the right content in terms of, you know, the business issues and problem you're trying to solve. But I think this is where Shenergo really started. The second is that um, we have a very wide and diverse client base from Australia to Canada and, uh, uh, you know, across Europe and Middle East as well. And I think that's super exciting because we really work with the community of our client to make sure that we have learned 
and we have capitalized in terms of IP, in terms of best practices and standards, you know, that allow us to compete and, and to be providing our client with the best solution, which is validated by the industry. I love that. And, and, uh, and, and, and quite so often it's that sort of mixture of, you know, looking at the right sort of uh, problem in the marketplace, having the right team around it and having strong technology. It's a pretty compelling reason to, to, uh, or, or, a pedal or fueling the source to get to, to unicorn status, isn't it? And I want to talk, talk a little bit more about this because Finogo has long been on, on the radar and someone who I've wanted to, you know, a company I've wanted to have on the show for, for, you know, for a while. There was a press release recently that came out of the work you've done with, with Copper, which sort of moves into that sort of, or less traditional world, shall we say, within, in, in finance. And I think that's another area that you guys are really interested in, isn't it? This brings a, a level of service to a number of, you, you spoke about the, the global opportunity that you have within, within the company, but it's not just a global opportunity, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, all the way from fintech through to investment banks is that there's a wide, you know, there's a wide consumer of, of the product you're talking about. Tell us a little bit about the, yeah, the, the, the copper case study, if you, if you wouldn't, and how that partnership's working and then a little bit more about who you're helping and how. Yes. Yeah, so if you should look at copper, it's uh, really a new player, um, in, in the area of digital assets offering uh, custodian services and, uh, you know, they have similar challenges and clients that, you know, investment bank and other institution across the world. So uh, where we can help them is really to help them to uh, straight away uplift their processes and the standards uh, to be able to meet uh, the complex requirement of their client base, which is mainly institutional client. So I think this is where you have a, a good marriage from you know, the traditional banking side and then the new uh, fintech players. And we at Finergo will make the bridge between the two. Um, the fact that we are a SaaS company, that also means that we can make our products and services available uh, to copper in a far more efficient manner. It can be consumed and they can really focus on their businesses rather than um, having to solve the kind of technology uh, problem that will come with uh, traditional uh, on-premise uh, enterprise software management. I think that that whole world you're talking about there as well um, is is ever increasing. You know, I'm again, again speaking about a documentary we're putting together about that sort of collision of, of traditional and decentralized finance, and uh, you know, within digital assets, you're seeing this uh, this world that's yearning for the sort of power of more traditional uh, institutions. I think companies like yours are helping to bridge that gap a little bit more and given the technology and the regulation that allows them to become more mainstream in terms of what they're looking at and how they're able to go to market and, uh, and, and go out there. The, the whole KYC world is, is, is a very, very interesting complex one at the same, at the same sort of time. How do you, how are you giving companies a, a sort of trading advantage to be able to work with you and how are you, how are you sort of, uh, navigating the, the, the noise in a, in a very tricky space sometimes and a very expensive space to get wrong as well. Yeah, we, we have, um, you know, um, obviously an expertise and a community of experts that allow us to understand what QIC regulation are about. Um, we also have a pretty unique geographic coverage. I think that's a very important part is that for a business like Copper or for any fintech that want to be global, they don't play in one place, they play everywhere. Um, and we at Fenergo, we already have that content, uh, you know, the digitization of the compliance rules and the obligations that come with KYC and financial crime. So uh, really, we act as an accelerator, an accelerator to their business, because when you work with us, uh, you can work in the U.S., but you can also the next day start operating in uh, another jurisdiction, whether in the U.K., in Australia or in Singapore. So that's really the benefit of uh, working with us. In addition, we continuously uh, monitor and, and track um, and do uh, regulatory horizon scanning uh, across the globe. So you can be sure that you're not only ready for what is today, but also we make you uh, ready for what's coming tomorrow. And that's, I would, I would say, a, a big uh, advantage as well. Yeah, I think there's there's two types of medicine in this world, isn't it? The ones which are, are uh, the ones that cure the 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 ailment once you've got it, and there's ones that can be preventative. And I like the fact that actually what you're talking about isn't just fixing today's problem, but it's looking forward about future proofing people as well and, and helping them, you know, to, to what comes next. And I think yeah, if we go back to what you, you said it before we came on air, you were talking about that sort of speed and structure. So this is about making people's lives 
uh, yeah, quicker, but also giving that sort of real structure around it as well, which is a, 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 a critical part to add to the, you know, the whole thing here, please here, which is what people are yearning for. They either want this, the, uh, the speed or they need the, uh, you know, the regulation to allow them to trade at a different level. Is that something you're seeing being particularly attractive to you guys? Yeah, and also leapfrogging in terms of uh, business processes. So one of the big things that we have been working on is how to reduce the burden and the operational burden of KYC and in particular of maintaining KYC because we often forget that when you onboard a client, you, you have a heavy lifting to do on day one. But, you know, you have a regulatory obligation as well to constantly review your, your, your book and your uh, client uh, portfolio. So um, one of the things that uh, we have been working on is how we can make it more efficient, you know, through automation, through uh, leveraging of external data um, to build client profile and to be more alert to changes to this profile, whether it's a change in a sanction list in a pet status or, you know, simple change that you may have in your um, registry type of uh, information and uh, automating this process uh, to make sure that at any point in time, you understand what the, ch what the change is, what is its impact, and to make sure that you can focus your people and resources to where the highest risk is, rather than to just... Um, you know, going through your your a book of work in a kind of the next and next and next manner. So I think these key changes are also very attractive for as a new player because they want to go to this business model straight away rather than have to have to build, you know, traditional um, operating model and then shifting to uh, to more automation in the future. Uh, and I think, um, yeah, speaking speaking of the future, another area that people are talking about a lot at the moment is this, uh, you know, within finance, alongside you know KSG and digital assets and everything we're talking about, know, KYC and digital assets and everything we're talking about in there, is the the movement to ESG. Um, it's on the it's on the radar um, and the conversation for for any financial institution at the, at the moment. I know this is something as well that you're you're seeing similarities between that KYC world uh, and the solutions you're able to provide in there to what you can do and help companies on the ESG side of things as well. Um, expand on that, if you would, because I think this is really interesting. Mm. So clearly, this is, a, as you know, financial institution and banks in particular um, will have the obligation to answer uh, ESG as a regulation, in particular in Europe, yeah. but very soon in the rest of the world. And as part of that, that means that a complete shift in organization and to determine, you know, where and when uh, should we uh, better understand what the ESG profile of a client. And very naturally, uh, you know, the natural place uh, for this and the answer is really uh, in the onboarding and in the KYC processes. There is a lot of similarities. It's about understanding uh, risk factors. It's about um, making a call on uh, the risk or the exposure you want to have with a client and to determine which kind of business relationship you want to build what kind of product and service you want to sell to them. So very naturally, this is where many financial institutions are looking to uh, host ESG processes. Um, and naturally, as you know, being a player in KYC, um, we have developed the same competencies and a very similar type of uh, processes and offering around ESG um, to really help the bank leverage what they have already um, to make sure that they are ready to to answer the obligation of tomorrow on ESG. And it's a super, super interesting uh, field. Still a lot of change. Uh, so still a lot of uh, community building around this. Uh, there is not one answer that everybody can follow. Still in building mode. Um, so, you know, we've been really on that journey for a while and I think it will continue uh, in, in the next uh, year or so. You've you mentioned it a couple of times that word community, which I which is something very close to my heart. That we, I, I believe that the businesses should run um, as communities effectively and uh, bring that client base together to to share uh, knowledge, share information, to uh, to you know to problem solve collectively. And I think sometimes it can be you know companies can be quite insular in terms of what they're doing and to try and keep trade secrets and not think about how they can move that further forward. Community, as as, as you know, your title is uh, chief strategy and marketing officer, I think. You know, community must be right at the very centre of of a, of a role like that. 
how does how does um that really work with ESG um, you know, in a sense there, because it's an area there which is obviously on everyone's radar. It is something there which has been on the radar for a year, for you know, a couple of years, but it is becoming more and more to, to the, the, the fore. But I again think it's something there which people talk about a lot, but don't necessarily have all the answers. How are you helping solve that problem through the community? So you're right in my title as marketing, and one of it is really customer marketing. So really working with our client to understand uh, where, where the issue is. And we run basically um, a working group on ESG where we offer to our clients the opportunity to join. And as part of this working group, we will be uh, running on, on, you know, on a very common basis. I think on ESG, it's been every six weeks or every, depending on, on, on when it happens. It's really look at challenges one by one. So, for example, one of the big challenge is data sources. Which ESG data should I use? What is the most reliable source of information to capture, you know, uh, ESG data for 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 a client? And um, what we do is that we engage with our client and discuss, you know, where should we invest in terms of integration? Should we uh, develop a partnership? with this actors or this other actors, uh, what you want. And you will know that for ESG, the answer is going to be very different from one region to the other. You know, the actors that play in Europe might be different than the one you will find in some countries in Asia, like Singapore, or Hong Kong, or Australia. Um, so what we try to do is really to adapt, uh, you know, uh, what we do in our product investment to make sure that we maximize the value for a majority of our clients. Um, the other thing that we have been working on is an ESG uh, risk uh, model. Okay, that means that uh, you know, as an institution, you want to be able to rate uh, your own clients independently. So we have um, worked on numerous models that exist, you know, across the world to to identify risk factors. So what are the component component of the E factors? which kind of data point, which kind of risk factors, um, how should we weight them, how do you weight between the E, S, and G. And uh, what we have done is, is propose, you know, best practice approach that, of course, you know, our clients have the liberty to, to change, but at least it gives them kind of the confidence that, you know, it's the model that is uh, built with other clients and uh, on which they can input. Fantastic. I think it's, you know, that sort of um, that co-creation piece is, is such an important part of the best tech businesses, isn't it? And I think that's uh, where where uh, you know where a lot of businesses can learn from and, and follow that sort of pathway. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the whole world of uh, of automation. Um, and machine learning is one of those sort of uh, um, box to tick sort of pieces that's, that's like a bingo when people are talking about great innovation in in uh, financial technology at the moment. But its use cases are actually far less common, I think. Its successful use cases are far less common than they, than they should be, and certainly where the potential of everything goes. And I, and I feel, again, that Finogo's business is ahead of the curve here uh, and really utilizing it for, for, you know, for good. So, um, and particularly when you're talking there about the adoption of, te you know, of technology, um, you work, again, in that sort of wide range of, of customer base. And you know, I think we were talking beforehand about how static sometimes the institutions themselves can be. The investment banks are sort of a, a little bit risk averse sometimes with with introducing new technology. But the fintechs will be a lot more, I guess, relative if that's the right sort of word around how they bring in and adopt it and looking to really make the best use cases. Tell me what that looks like for for, for you and the company at the moment because there's some pretty exciting stuff going on here too, right? Yeah, so it's really at the, at the core of what we do is that uh, how can we do better? You know, how can you yeah. do better um, to make your investment meaningful and uh, avoid, you know, just uh, body shopping and, and having bodies? So how can technology help you in that front? Um, so one of the exciting things that happened last year is that uh, we made an acquisition uh, last April and we acquired Sentinels with a really, um, you know, an up and coming player in the world of IML transaction monitoring. And what is fascinating about IML transaction monitoring is first of all, it's colluding with um, KYC because more and more you want to make sure that as I was explaining earlier, you know your client at any point in time and you understand from their behavior and the type of transaction they do with you, 
you know, whether they are aligned or not with what they declare to you at the point of onboarding. Yeah. So that's a really important pieces for us that we are trying to glue together. But what is more most exciting about uh, Sentinels is that they are completely um, changing the way uh, IML transactions monitoring is is uh, mm. uh, getting defined. So in the past, or even today, it's still very rule-based. So you will define what are the rules based on your type of business, the type of transaction you're doing. And this rule will then generate alerts that need to be analyzed. And one of the biggest problems in the industry is what we call the false positive. That means you mm. think there is a problem, generality there is not, not a problem. And then the worst is the true positive that you don't get to discover, which will be the, the worst case scenario. So um, what uh, Sentinel does is that they combine the rules, but they are complementing that with uh, machine learning and uh, uh, algorithms that allows to really decrease the number of false positives. And this is super important because that's such a direct impact into the size of the team you need and the capability to really, really fight financial crime in a far more effective manner. Because if you just spend all your time looking for you know, uh, the wrong cases and not spending enough time working on the true cases. So so this is really where we see that shift. And clearly the adoption of this kind of techniques um, is far higher with fintech players. Uh, for banks, you know, they still need, uh, you know, to 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 prove their model and, and you know, for them to change will take slightly longer. Uh, but if you look at fintechs today, they are really to adopt, you know, this kind of new techniques. Uh, one, you can prove to them that they work and they really improve uh, the overall uh, processes. I think it's really interesting you mentioned there about the sort of uh, headcount, because in financial crime, tr traditionally in the institutions, the, the idea has been to throw more headcounts at it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's complex, right? Particularly when you look at all sorts of different areas about monitoring and and. Uh, you know, surveillance to an extent on you know on this whole this whole project product. Yeah, you know, you've got a number of different people there looking at things. Human error is a, is a you know is is a massive part of all of this. And so to actually be able to go in there and say, look, you, you reduce banks of headcount into technology that can really shift the needle and, and provide a much more uh, valuable and and strength stronger proposition to solve the issue. That's, you know, it's, it's a shame, isn't it, sometimes that the adoption can be a little bit slower in the institution because this is such an obvious uh, opportunity to do what I think is some of the, the, the principal parts of buying at the moment, which is is, is an increased efficiency, reduced friction, uh, increased productivity all the way across the business and reduced spend. Mm -hmm. That's effectively exactly what you're talking about here, right? Absolutely, yes. Let's come back to Bernard, Bernard. There's a There's a lot there to, to, to be said as to, as to why the company's gone from strength to strength. Tell us about what's next for the company. What does that? What does the future look like for you guys? So right now, I just you know took um, about ESG, so it's still an area of investment because you know as you know it's uh, still in development. So um, we continue to invest you know in this area. We are launching smart reviews, uh, which will be really um, the automation piece for KYC, and uh, that's a very exciting piece coming in October. And then we just continue to um, to develop uh, from a geographic perspective. So we have a, a lot of very ex exciting activity coming in uh, Middle East, in Africa. Uh, we are looking as well as Latin, you know, starting working with institutions there. And of course, you know, Asia, it's still an area where uh, we continue developing. So far, it's super exciting because you have a mix of kind of innovation coming to the market in the coming months, plus, you know, really uh, growing the companies, um, becoming even more diverse than we were. We're expanding our offices. So, you know, on a day-to-day, -day, it's a um, very active and, and, and fun place to be. Um, and we, we are moving more and more uh, towards um, the SaaS, and that's a very exciting uh, transformation as well for our company on you know, how you you become both a provider of technology, but you're also running, you know, the software. And, uh, you know, that's an exciting time to be uh, in Finergo right now. I love that. And, so, it, and, it, and it definitely does sound exciting. I mean, the, the scale of everything is just so overwhelming, isn't it? When you think about all of that, I, I, I often talk to VCs and investors and uh, 
and, and ask them what, you know, what makes companies attractive. Uh, and they talk about, you know, market potential. So, so is this a problem that people really have and need to, need to focus in on them both? Yeah, the KYC side of things obvious, but also the ESG piece there is is, a, is a, an enormous issue, which you know which has been boiling out for a while and it, we're within within the space. They then talk about the sort of uh, yeah remits, so what sort of scalability has this, how far and, and how well, how wide's the market, mm. and you've basically just mentioned the entire world <laughs> in terms of uh, how what and where where it can go, which is which is another uh, uh, you know incredible piece for it. And I think when you've got those building blocks in place, it's no it's no surprise as to why the companies have achieved the status that it has and, and the growth pattern it has as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish with a question for you, Stella, which 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 involves who should be speaking to you. I mean, look, there's so many different things that we've uh, we've covered in there, so many different companies and, and uh, geographies that you can listen to. Who should be reaching out right now uh, to be talking to Finergo and and having that conversation with you guys right now? Anyone who is looking to uh, transform, they manage uh, their clients, the way they onboard them, the way they manage uh, you know, the fight against financial crime. Because really, it's all about digitization and about really changing the way of working. Any new player, you know, is looking like to um, to to become a player, you know, in the financial uh, world, um, because you know we we can help them accelerate um, and get there. Fantastic. And what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? The best way is to go to our website on www.fenego.com and uh, you'll be able to uh, get in touch pretty easy. Go in there and find out more. Stella, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thanks so much for, uh, for, for shining the lights on it. It is, a, it is a quite frankly brilliant company doing some amazing things. So keep up the good work and uh, thanks for sharing. I'm sure there'll be lots of people there who want to get in touch and find out a little bit more. Uh, great having you on the show. Thanks so much. Thank you, Toby, for the great conversation. Absolute pleasure. And thank you all for watching. We will see you soon on our episode of Fintech Focus TV. Thanks very much. Mm-hmm.